सो so, हमने मॉर्निंग uh, में जो डिस्कस किया था आपको बहुत फंडामेंटल लेवल पे बताया था कि क्यों वो जो सिलेक्शन रूल्स होते हैं वो कैसे कहाँ हाउ वॉट इज़ द ओरिजिन ऑफ दोज सिलेक्शन रूल्स एंड देर वॉज अ डिस्कशन ऑन दैट एंड इन दैट कॉन्टेक्स्ट आई टोल्ड यू थ्री थिंग्स थ्री थिंग्स दैट डिटर्मिन द सिलेक्शन रूल वन यू हैव टू लुक फॉर द कंजर्वेशन ऑफ एनर्जी एनर्जी इज कंजर्व सो डेल ई इज इक्वल टू एच यू दैट कम्स फ्रॉम देर देन यू हैव नंबर टू यू हैव टू लुक फॉर द डाईपोल इज क्रिएटेड क्रिएशन ऑफ डाईपोल विच इज नाउ नोन एज ट्रांजिशन डाईपोल हियर ड्यू टू द एसीमेट्रिक माइग्रेशन ऑफ चार्जेस वेन वन टाइप ऑफ ऑर्बिटल चेंजेस इन टू अनदर टाइप ठीक है एक इलेक्ट्रॉन वेव फंक्शन दूसरे नए टाइप के वेव फंक्शन में जो चेंज हो रहा है वेव प्रोफाइल का चेंज होना ठीक है ना एस ऑर्बिटल सो एस इलेक्ट्रॉन कन्वर्ट्स इन टू पी सो दिस इज द विजुअलाइजेशन दैट यू शुड गेट ठीक है कभी ये मत सोचिए कि एक कटोरा है बर्तन है उसमें इलेक्ट्रॉन है फिर भी उसमें से निकल के दूसरे वाले में चला गया ऐसा कुछ नहीं होता है आपको उस मैंने शायद शुरुआत में बताया था बॉन्डिंग की शुरुआत में कि वी आर कंसिडरिंग इट एज अ थ्री डायमेंशनल वेव एंड वो थ्री डायमेंशनल वेव का जो स्फेरिकल डम्बल वो सब जो ड्रॉप कर रहे हैं वो सब एंगुलर पार्ट ऑफ द वेव फंक्शन का एक जस्ट एक पार्ट है जो कि हम ड्रॉप करके बॉन्डिंग एक्सप्लेन कर रहे हैं ये सब कर रहे हैं और हाइड्रोजन सो जस्ट ओके सो नाउ सो दिस इज व्हाट वी वर डिस्कसिंग सो सो डाइप क्रिएशन ऑफ डाइपोल वाज इम्पोर्टेंट बिकॉज ओनली देन द सिस्टम इज एबल टू इंटरेक्ट विद द इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड ऑफ द लाइट एंड देन द सेकंड थिंग वाज दैट कंजर्वेशन ऑफ एंगुलर मोमेंटम एंड कंजर्वेशन ऑफ एंगुलर मोमेंटम व्हेन वी आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट वी ऑल्सो हैव टू कंसिडर दैट फोटोन्स हैव spin one and that they have spin angular momentum and that should be taken into account and when you try to conserve them you get this del l plus minus one thing comes from there right and uh, so these are the things that we considered in the morning and you remember the laporte selection rules is related to uh, change in di so creation of dipole that during the process that those things were discussed and then as the spin selection rule for the the electrons angular moment spin angular moment del s this spin angular momentum should not undergo any change that has to be taken care of okay so all these are somehow related to the conservation of angular momentum and then uh, you also have yeah so this leads to different types of values the morning we had discussed these slides uh, so so better in tetrahedral complexes you have very high absorption coefficient because of there is such rules where g to u transitions or because there is no center of symmetry those things does not apply and they exist they have strong absorption the extinction coefficient is very large and so you have uh, uh, they uh, they will sh definitely show strong colors very vibrant colors strong colors as compared to octahedral complexes and then the last thing that we were considering was that charge transfer bands and so we'll look into that in a short while from now so we are looking for, for that uh, when we say forbidden transitions that is when the rules are not being followed i mean the conservation of angular momentum is not happening looking at straight away when we look at it then how is how come that uh, is that a faint color or something a small transition that even if a less number of transition are happening uh, how how could they happen so how could a weak absorption can be observed it should have been nothing at all तो ये थोड़ा बहुत जो एब्जॉर्बशन होता है फॉरबिडन जिसको हम कह रहे हैं उसके लिए भी वो कैसे होता है हाउ इट इज पॉसिबल सो दैट इज वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू लुक फॉर दैट हाउ डू दिस सिलेक्शन रूल्स आर रिलैक्सड इन सम केस इन सर्टन केसेस एंड हाउ डू दिस ट्रांजिशन अकर टू अस 
it will occur to a less extent but it will occur so one thing is this vibronic coupling so the molecule or the complex that we are talking about is not static it is not static it is undergoing continuous vibration and rotational motion so in vibrational motion there is a chance that the asymmetric vibration which changes the center uh, so uh, for example if we take the example of let me take so this is uh, co2 <coughs> sorry this is ml6 and suppose it, if it is stretching symmetrically that all the six uh, ligands are stretching out outwards and or, or all of them are compressing inwards at the same time so that is stretching uh, symmetric stretching in that case there is no change in the symmetry the center of symmetry is retained but suppose one of the ligands is moving outwards other one is compressing inwards so in that vibration that is asymmetric vibration there will be a change in the symmetry and within that when the symmetry center of symmetry is lost at that time a photon comes it will be there will be a transition is possible so that dd transition is possible because of that so that kind of thing can be imagined in a co2 molecule also which has a center of symmetry carbon dioxide has a center of symmetry just like just to give an example with a we are taking example of carbon dioxide which also has center of symmetry and when it is going symmetric mode of vibration that is either both the oxygen are moving towards carbon with the same maintaining the same distance or they are moving outwards with the same distance so that is symmetric stretching in that case this center of symmetry is retained but if you are talking about blending mode the center of symmetry is gone as soon as this uh, CO2 starts moving this way or whenever you have asymmetric stretching that the oxygen molecule is moving in this in this side this one is uh, uh, moving towards this side so they will be slightly uh, so uh, I could show you with some uh, example asymmetric stretching so kind of thing like uh, just a moment to show you stretching uh, we are talking about this kind of symmetric stretching so you can visualize this now symmetric stretching is this one asymmetric stretching is this so there are a lot of vibrations that are possible in a molecule in a complex molecule like a ml6 a lot of vibrational modes will be there and in some of these vibrational modes like consider this asymmetric stretching there's symmetry will be lost center of symmetry will be gone and in that case you will have you will see if a photon comes then the possibility of this thing is there so look at the co2 look at the co2 this is the example of symmetric stretch okay this is example of anti symmetric stretch are you looking at the vibrations symmetric stretch means equally on both sides the oxygen is moving anti-symmetric one oxygen is moving inwards the other one is moving out outwards so symmetry is lost here and in the bending case again the center of symmetry is gone okay so it has the cent center of symmetry it does and other two these two do, do not have center of symmetry okay so this is the bending mode so this is the example that center of symmetry is lost and at that point there is no uh, that Laporte's rule which is u to g g rate to 1 g rate with is designation is there with respect to the uh, center of symmetry that is not applicable and at that point if a photon comes then absorption can happen okay so this is what so very simple example that I was trying to show you with, with respect to this with a uh, moving molecule undergoing vibrations and so you can think of uh, the similar thing happening here but it is a number of vibrations will be much more and the possibilities of 
the thing having and this kind of uh, so if this vibration is happening which breaks down the symmetry and the center of symmetry is lost then uh, photon can come and it, the absorption can happen and it is also seen from the lifetime of this this vibrational lifetime is 10 to power minus 13 second where the absorption of light takes a, it is a much faster process 10 to power minus 18 second so by a factor of 10 to the power 5 it is slower so in a stretched condition mein, the same photon aega, matlab, it will be like thousand so uh, the it is the, there is a quite a chance that this kind of things can happen right look at the time scale matlab 1000 times hai to uske liye jab photon aaya to uske liye wo ruka hua hai aisa hi usko lagega theek hai aur absorption of light ho jayega theek hai so so within the lifetime of the uh, uh, this uh, vibrational mode it is possible that a photon comes and uh, absorption is happen so that's the one reason why uh, some of these uh, weak absorption appear due to the uh, although the transition is forbidden but there is slight relaxation in the selection rule when it is simultaneously undergoing uh, vibration and then the electronic transition happens so, suddenly the photon comes so during the vibration some of the symmetry there are certain vibrational modes in which the center of symmetry is lost and then this can happen the second reason why we do see uh, Laporte forbidden transition occurring to a weaker extent, to a lesser extent is that mixing of states so what is happening uh, because you have a uh, example of mixing is that d orbital of and the p orbitals can be mixed when the ligands approach the metal ion and because of that this it is now not perfectly gyrated or ungyrated that that symmetry is gone okay d is gyrated p is ungyrated and if they if they mix then there is partial breakdown of this thing of the Laporte selection rule and then also transition can happen third we can have the spin angular momentum vector the orbital angular momentum vector so far we have considered these to be separated from each other right we have purely either we are analyzing pure spin or pure orbital motion but in certain in many cases it has been found that spin and or spin angular momentum vector and the orbital angular momentum vector they interact to give rise to a new angular momentum vector which is the uh, so uh, which is known as the spin orbit coupling so this kind of things is very common in heavier transition metals and we do see uh, so this so when there is no pure spin or orbital angular momentum and the, but there is something com combination of the two which is there so then, then there is no spin selection rule or orbital uh, spin selection rule can be specifically applied so breakdown of spin selection rule is due to this particular reason so spin orbit coupling to give you an idea uh, let me just tell you what it, it means let me show you uh, some more illustrations on that what it means you know uh, you can so this is how we show the spin uh, in this picture you, you have this is the total angular momentum look at this this picture summarizes the total angular momentum so you know all these angular momentum whenever we have to show we, sh we should show on a cone okay the z component is fixed so you can put anywhere on the cone the z component still remains the same and the, the length of the vector defines the magnitude so this is how we represent this thing so you see this is the spin spin angular momentum on the green one any you draw a line from the tip to the in this tip to the uh, from the uh, origin to the this point this is the 
spin angular momentum vector anywhere on the cone. The magnitude is same, and the z component is also same. That is similarly when you are talking about l, this is the summation of all the l values of the electrons. Any number of you take a certain number of electrons, combine all the l values, so that gives the capital L. So this is a scheme that. Is followed. We will learn more about this in the next semester in quantum mechanics and also in the um, photochemistry of complexes. So in next semester you will be learning more about this uh, spin orbit coupling and the term symbols. So th those part will be there. Uh, so because of this, this is the combination. So this vector. So interaction. How is it happening? Look at this. This is the vector L. This combi combined orbital angular momentum this is the vector s capital s which is the com combined uh, spin angular momentum vector of all the electrons present in a given atom and then the resultant is this vector over here okay so this resultant is j this is your resultant angular momentum so this is how this is the coupling scheme that is developed and you have to, uh, yeah, we can spend some more time on that, but uh, about why we are showing it on the cone that comes from the quantum mechanics, the principle of quantum mechanics, which you will learn in the second semester. That z component is fixed and the x, y component of the vector can vary. And so you are not sure. So uncertainty principle, which you have learned about this position and momentum also applies here in the three components of angular momentum lx ly lz okay so that's why we have to show them on the cone the correct way of showing the angular momentum vector is not through the arrows but draw a cone and then show the arrow okay anywhere on the cone the magnitude is same the z component is also the same okay so this is how we show it so this mechanism so because of this so now you can't when they have combined to give you j you can't really apply the simple spin selection rule because there is no spin angular momentum uh, as a, ex existing as separate separately okay so so this is also a reason for the breakdown of the spin selection rule so so not this one okay come here so where was so that is one of the partial lifting of this happens due to this coupling that we have I have just shown you how it happens. A detailed discussion will follow in the second semester on this both in quantum mechanics classes and as well as in the inorganic chemistry, photochemistry. Okay, so so because of this, so this is how we get some of these transitions but they will occur to a weaker extent they will happen because it is only partial lifting we are talking about and when we are talking about vibronic coupling we were also talking it is momentary process it is it happens momentarily for a certain seconds 10 to the power minus 13 seconds only and then the photon has to come in so the probability of transition becomes very very less so they will appear they will not be that intense okay it will very feeble very small uh, absorbance value that you will get okay mixing of states so three reasons why we do see this kind of thing and uh, to give you an example this experiment you could have performed in the lab very easily see take a cobalt coh 6 cobalt uh, um, co2 plus you will have and then you add conch hcl so you are seeing a pink uh, pale pink color here pale pink color and when you add HCl it shows a very intense blue color so so why this happens because in this case it is a purely octahedral it is octahedral which now changes to tetrahedral complex and because in tetrahedral you do not have the restrictions and so the absorption is very uh, good the pr probability of transition goes up and the color is very very intense so that uh, so that is clearly seen when you add so coh2o6 to cocl4 
so it's so octahedral complex to tetrahedral complex that transformation whenever is is clearly observed in case of cobalt and the color intensity goes up of course the energy changes so that is a change in wavelength there is also change in intensity there are two things that you must understand wavelength bhi change ho raha hai energy ka criteria change ho raha hai aur uske sath sath absorption bhi change ho raha hai so these are the things that uh, you will observe and uh, so in change in so absorbance will be high extinction coefficient is so extinction is large wavelength is so or uh, okay so i think this example here yeah uh yeah if you like to see this kahan gaya ha i think kon hai सो ये देख रहे ना सी ओ एच टू सिक्स जो हमने कहा पेल पिंक पिंक एंड डार्क ब्लू सी ओ सी एल फोर दिस इज डार्क ब्लू द प्रीवियस एग्जाम्पल दैट वी हैव जस्ट सीन ऑन द स्क्रीन सो दिस इज so in in absorption spectrum you it will be like this very small value of molar absorption absorbance here and the wavelength is somewhere here now it is shifting to smaller uh, longer wavelength that is lower energy so आप यहाँ पे देख सकते हैं कि यहाँ पे जो कलर है कलर का इंटेंसिटी कम होना मतलब एब्जॉर्बेंस का वैल्यू कम हो जाएगा ऑक्ट्राहीड्रल कॉम्प्लेक्स है इसलिए जो फ्रीक्वेंसी डेल्टा नॉट्स ज़्यादा है तो हायर एनर्जी साइड में शॉर्टर वेवलेंथ हायर एनर्जी बट एज सुन एज इट चेंजेस टू टेट्राहीड्रल कॉम्प्लेक्स द एनर्जी डेल del not is large so that is you see the it is appearing here del t is small so in tetrahedral complex you have smaller energy gap so it is shifting to the longer wavelength side but the intensity the absorbance value is very high for the same concentration of cobalt you will get this kind of thing so this intensity of absorption the intensity of color that we are talking about so that means you have a very high value of absorbance okay absorption molar it should be uh -huh. so this kind of thing that we observe is uh, resembles so this is what we could see in this compound okay and now uh, we have to consider few more things besides dd transitions we also have something called charge transfer transitions which is of three types lmct ligand to metal metal to ligand charge transfer and intervalence transitions so what are these things let's uh, try to understand so And just so for example we will see this thing so a very common example of charge transfer band is what you have already done in the lab permanganate ion it looks purple color solution the spectrum looks like this very intense band at at 528 nanometers okay so this is the deep purple color that we account for okay so how does this happen how how the mn oxidation state is plus 7 it is a d0 system but yet so this dd transition is not possible at all it is a d0 system 
the intense color is due to transfer of electron from oxygen to cobalt okay momentary transfer so this kind of thing is usually happens uh, and you get it they are always most intense in color so for example charge transfer bands are always more intense they are spin allowed laparte allowed because the difference between this is that there is a transfer of electron from one atom to another one right for all others you you were talking about transfer of electron from one orbital to another orbital of the same atom okay so like metal manganese cobalt so d orbitals of the same atom there was transfer of electron okay here it is transfer of from oxygen to the metal or metal to the ligand so in this kind of situation the color is very intense the extinction coefficient is very large so how does that happen so it is schematically we can understand it this way oxygen has lone pairs and you have vacant d orbitals on the metal and so when the light falls in it 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 uh, the electron is transferred from oxygen to the metal orbital vacant orbital this happens momentarily and because of this they are they appear to be very intense in color dark color appearance that you see very huge strong absorption of light happens because it is not uh, it is uh, the laporte selection rule the spin selection rules do not apply over here this is always possible so this is this transition kind of transition is always possible and lmct transition are usually in the ultraviolet range but in some cases where just as this permanganate chromate you will find that it will be in visible region and we are able to see the intense color okay so so it will be observed in the visible region if so the, in special cases they appear so the cases where metal to lmct band appears in the visible region and we are able to see the colors is when metal is easily reducible you can reduce the metal so uh, easily that means it must be in high oxidation state something which is ready to accept electrons okay so high oxidation state of the metal it is very it will readily accept any electron that comes its, its way and ligand should be something which is must have lone pair of electrons uh, of suitable energy to be given okay so in such cases you will have in the visible region or near ultraviolet region intense band will appear uh, which is not seen uh, the intensity is much more than dd bands ever observed in whether it's uh, okay so so uh, ligand to metal charge transfer appear when metal is easily reduced or in high oxidation state so example is here look at these things left to right titanium 4 plus vanadium chromium 6 plus ma magnesium 7 plus so this is the high oxidation state when it is the high oxidation state we say that it, it is easily reducible you can reduce it easily it can accept electron and so there will be tendency and uh, the color will be the energy of this transition will lie is likely to lie in the visible region whereas as you are moving cr6 plus less oxi uh, oxidation state is, is slightly less but still high enough and it is also re reducible but less than mno4 the energy will be lying the energy of the transition would be much lower then in in this case it will be further lowered in case of vanadium 5 plus and titanium 4 plus so all of them are d0 system all these are d0 and in all of them ligand to metal charge transfer appear and so as we move left to right we are moving to a system which is more easily reduced 
and so the energy of the transitions also goes down okay so they it has titanium 4 absorbs in the white region while the absorption in the vo4 vanadium 5 plus in this case vo4 3 minus it appears at in the again in the uv side but as we go to this it is chromate it it absorbs yellow it appears yellow and it appears purple so appearance changes color so absorption is now taking place in the visible region right so far uv so what you have seen far uv to uv region then these are in visible so gradually the energy of the transition is decreasing as the metal becomes more and more easily reducible so metal to ligand charge transfer this is the reverse process now that we are talking about the transfer of electron from metal orbitals filled metal orbitals to low lying empty orbitals on the ligand so the metal so in this case metal must be in must have electrons with, with it it must be easy to uh, uh, electron rich in that sense that low, in low oxidation state if a metal is in low oxidation state it will be able to give electrons to the uh, or empty orbitals of ligand so it typically it is found in case of fe2 plus re2 plus osmium2 plus so where you have <coughs> relatively uh, suitable orbitals are also available in in on the ligand empty orbitals and so it is possible here so even <coughs> sunlight excites the electron from the m2 plus t2g6 to empty ligand of pi star orbital and so this is a good way of okay so charge transfer spectra that so the question that arises now is that this charge transfer spectra is the most intense you will always see very intense color in the solution whenever there is charge transfer spectra is happening in the visible region uh, charge transfer happens in the visible region then so why they are so intense one thing that you have to understand that intensity of intensity of the absorption that we are talking about is directly proportional to the integral square of this integral okay square of the integral mu fi which is what we write as this is square of the integral so transition dipole so this is square of the transition dipole integral that is what we are talking about is square of transition dipole integral uska us pe depend karta hai now here what is important to look at is that the integral that we are talking about it involves the what it involves the final wave function and you have operator the dipole moment operator mu and initial tau so there are few things that need to be considered here so this is the integral that we are talking about ye jo hai integral hai iska square okay so this mu here is what mu is mu cap is nothing but q into r vector sign okay q into r so distance so dipole moment charge into distance what you have charge into distance right so this is the main thing that you have to keep in mind it is equal to into distance so what is happening here when 
it is a transfer of electron from one at oxygen atom to mn mn7 plus the distance that it covers is large this is large oxygen 2 oxygen 2 minus 2 mn2 plus one atom to another atom right and because of that the value of this dipole moment goes up and so dipole very large dipole moment is developed and so when you square it and do all the things this so the transition dipole has a very large value due to the increase in distance because it is transferred from one atom to another atom remember the earlier transitions that we were discussing it was transfer of electron from t2g set to eg set right that was on one atom like met metal atom only so that in that case also the same equation was applied but the distance was much less because transfer involved electrons from the same at one orbital to another orbital okay so that was relatively smaller but here the this uh, distance is large and because of that the q into r the the value of the overall dipole moment is large and so when you square it it is even larger value and so intensity of absorption goes up substantially now the question is that does that mean that you go on increasing the distance and you will have a very large uh, and the absorption intensity of absorption will go on increasing that answer is no because there is an optimum distance beyond which you won't see anything uh, the absorption will start decreasing because because you also have to look for the this the wave functions are not are also there and this wave function must have substantial overlap so the second factor that determines is that psi f and psi i must have should have substantial overlap good overlap for the overall value of this uh, transition dipole to be higher if you want the transition dipole to be higher this should also be followed so it is so there is an optimum distance so increasing the distance is good as long as there is sufficient overlap if the overlap of the initial and final wave function is not there it's uh, then it will the intensity will decrease again so the, there are two factors that control the thing and so when you analyze it from the quantum mechanical point of view you are able to explain why there is increase in the uh, intensity a substantial increase in intensity when you have this kind of charge transfer spectra taking place in a complex okay so this the same thing is stated over here we have a there's a large distance of migration for the electron when when you are talking about ligand to metal or vice versa and due to this large value of the transition dipole moment there is high intensity of absorption so in uh, so there's also we find that there's it also involves in initial and final wave function and if there is zero overlap of the wave functions then again the value will go down so it will if the distance is increased beyond a point the wave functions at that point will, will uh, overlap will decrease and the value of the dipole moment will go down so it is uh, there is optimum distance just like the bond distance here a m and o that is good distance where the dipole transition dipole moment is large because the overlap of the wave function is also good they are in the same region of space okay and this is happening. so so all such functions in uh, lmct or mlct is usually large an interference transfer we mean uh, transfer of in certain complexes you will find that there is transfer of electron from like in case of prussian blue 
we see a blue color because there is a transfer of electron from Fe2 plus Fe3 plus. So in such complexes, it, it is the transfer from one metal which is in low oxidation state to another metal which is in higher oxidation state. So this kind of charge transfer is called intervalence transitions. Only the valency of the two metal ions is different. The, the, the element is same. Okay. And so all these things can be summarized in this kind of in MO uh, from the molecular vital picture molecular vital theory. You, this all this spectrum can be explained. So if, whenever you have a <coughs> MLCT is the blue one, you can see from T T T two G star. So, sorry. Uh, uh, metal to ligand so starting from the metal orbital so t2g or eg set orbitals eg or t2g orbitals which have so the orbitals which have have more contribution molecular orbitals which have more contribution from the metal if they are having electrons and the, it starts from there so the blue line that you see carefully you see the blue lines that is transition from metal to ligand orbitals so see this is the ligand pi star orbital and the molecular orbital which is formed due to the metal orbital overlap is here. So it has a greater contribution from the ligand side. And so we say that it will retain the character of ligands. And so we say that whenever the transition is happening from this to this, it is metal to ligand charge transfer. On the other hand, if you look for the red lines here, you see LMCT. LMCT, this is the ligand group orbital and this is the molecular orbital so this molecular orbital has a greater contribution from the ligand and if this is filled they and little bit with little bit of energy p2g is vacant then the if it is transferred to this this is t2g set so this is a ligand to metal charge transfer if so any of these red lines that you can see or it, it can be transferred to eg set or from the pi orbitals that we see here, L pi uh, orbitals which are, so L sigma, L pi, that means you have, you are considering the orbitals which are suitable for sigma bonding, which have, uh, which are aligned along the internuclear axis. And then you can also consider orbitals which are pi orbitals, uh, having suitable for pi. And if these are filled with electrons, and then with a small absorption of energy, the transfer occurs to eg or t2g sets so so what you see here that transition ending the arrows ending at the eg or t2g the red arrows end at t2g and eg set and they begin at at a molecular orbital which are having greater character from the ligand side on the other hand the blue arrows that you see they start at the eg or t2g orbitals of the metal and end up at the L pi star of the ligand. Okay, molecular. So, molecular orbital having more character from L pi star of the ligand. So, this kind of transitions are what you know is the charge transfer spectra. So, so they occur in both sigma and back bonding type thing. Okay. So, D6 uncoordinated and this is the splitting ligand sigma LMCT transitions. So this is shown over here. So all this complex set Prussian blue permagnet ion, Prussian blue intervalence transfer, ferric thiocyanate, potassium dichromate, all of these involve this charge transfer spectra. Another way to show simplified view of the same thing can be this one ligand to metal ligand to metal is number two mlct metal to ligand the yellow arrow and rest of it is the metal to metal transitions this is metal to metal transition t2g to eg set normally which we consider in octahedral we was we started with this and we have now reached this one and the blue one is ligand to ligand transfer. So these are the things that uh, 
uh, you can yeah so this Prussian blue is something a complex that ferric ferrocyanide I'm not sure so this is the structure of uh, it is made when you mix ferricyanide and ferrocyanide mix them together you get this Prussian blue okay and uh, so this is what so this is your formula of the prussian blue what is this this is your prussian blue cobr4 minus mnf6 minus cos2 6 now if you are asked this question arrange them arrange the given complexes in the increasing order of intensity then I think you should be able to do is which one will be least intense which one will be most intense so accordingly arrange them so this is the category you have to look for spin forbidden laporte forbidden then allow one thing gets allowed another one is still forbidden spin allowed laporte allowed tetrahedral so find it out and answer it by yourself do it and the charge transfer transitions most intense so where so out of these four examples, which one will be having highest intensity of absorption? Why? So all these things you can write. Okay. So.